Buenos noches, our dear viewers, and bienvenido to another episode of our CPK Bulletin. I'm your host, Sefusani, and today we have a guest to die for, and I will let him introduce himself, and we will get right to the interview, and I would like to invite Mr. Ernesto Gomez Diaz, who is the ambassador of Cuba to Kenya, and he has graciously welcomed us into his home to have this interview. Welcome, Ernesto, to our CPK TV. Asante Sana. It is my pleasure. Okay. And maybe you could just, I know I've mentioned your name and I've said what you do, but you could just tell our viewers who are watching us from home uh, your full name and, you know, what you've been doing in Kenya. Yes, uh, as uh, you have already said, so I am uh, the Cuban ambassador to Kenya since uh, 2016. It has been a real pleasure for me to serve my country, to serve my people in that beautiful and in this uh, very friendly country. I am almost living in a few days, Kenya, and coming back to Havana, but uh, I can assure you that uh, I will miss Kenya very much. Thank you very much, very much, Mr. Ernesto, also for just inviting us into our home and having this, this interview with us. And just to kick off, um, how, how was your experience? How has your experience been uh, in Kenya for, for the five years that you've been in the country? Frankly speaking, uh, I found uh, in Kenya a very lovely people. Yeah. Beautiful country. Yes. And uh, at the same time, we, find, uh, we found a lot of solidarity yes. on Cuba. Mm -hmm. Not only from the Cubanist party, not only from the Kenyan Cuban French society, but from all the people here, including the government of Kenya. We really uh, got very impressed about the solidarity with Cuba. And uh, without any doubt, if we still alive in Cuba, if we are surviving, it's because of, of the solidarity all over the world, including Kenya, of course. I would like to thank the Kenyan people for the whole support that offered to me during my duty here in Kenya. I miss Kenya, I yeah. repeat. Thank you very much, and uh, that is so graceful that you've had such a good uh, moment and, uh, you know, experience uh, in our country, Kenya. And when you speak about solidarity and the solidarity that you have had uh, from, you know, the different organizations, including uh, the Communist Party of Kenya, we have seen uh, a friendship with the Kenya-Cuba uh, Friendship Society. And recently on our CPK bulletin, uh, we featured the Secretary General of the Communist Party of Kenya, Mr. Benedict Washira, who participated uh, in a picketing outside the U.S. Embassy in South Africa, which was talking about ending the blockade, uh, uh, the, the blockade in Cuba that you know has been there by the U.S. for over many years. Uh, what would you like to say about you know the blockade that is you know economical and financial, and you know and the effects that it has had on the people of Cuba? Let, let me explain something. To, uh, that uh, policy yes. is a very criminal because it's uh, punishing a whole country, a whole people, just for defending different ideas. Yes. When the U.S. is asking for uh, democracy, free of uh, opinions, and so on, they oppress the Cuban people just to defend a different system. Yes. The Cuban people have suffered blockades uh, or embargo, as you prefer, for more than 62 years. Yes. The only uh, idea for the blockade is just to destroy the Cuban revolution. Yes. It, it is an example that they want to destroy from the very beginning. And you cannot forget that America, and the United States of America, because America belongs to all of us. Yes. They have been interested in Cuba for 100 years. Then in 1959, we uh, uh, initiated the Cuban Revolution. 
was very important for the whole continent and even for the world. Today, there are hundreds of sanctions on Cuba. For example, Cuban people living in the US, they are not able to send money to their families, including during the pandemic period. American cities are not allowed to Cuba. Yes. Why? Yes. If we are neighbors. It's so complicated for Cuba to make any transaction, financial transaction, just to send money from here to my family, or if you want to send some money to a Cuban friends in Cuba, it's impossible from here because of the American blockade. It's not only a policy uh, between Cuba and US. The whole world is involved because of the pressure, because of the sanction on them. That's a very criminal. Sometimes uh, we need some uh, equipment, medical equipment, some uh, specific drugs and medicine, but it's, they are only be produced in the US. Yes. And because of the blockade, we are not allowed to take it. There are many people who have lost their life because of that criminal policy. Almost all the country, every year, in the General Assembly in New York, votes in favor of Cuba, just asking the American government administration to lift the blockade. But it's still on. Despite of the new administration, despite of the promise during the uh, President Biden's uh, campaign, all of sanctions on Cuba from the Donald Trump, uh, from the Trump administration, they are still on. But we are still there, surviving, developing our country, defending our sovereignty, our independence, because we know that uh, there are many people in the world looking, looking at Cuba, because we are offering another way. This is one of the reasons that they uh, impose sanction on Cuba. The only thing that Cuba wants is just to allow us to live in peace. To live in peace, that's all. And Ambassador, you speak, uh, you speak so deeply about the issue in Cuba, and I, I feel like maybe it's because of how much it has affected uh, the people in Cuba. But even as we speak about the blockade of the U.S. on Cuba uh, over these many years, we still see that Cuba, which has a smaller GDP than that of Kenya, has managed to triumph. And, you know, it has managed to come on top on so many things. When we look at uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, Cuba is one of the countries that has come up with its own vaccine. And not only with a vaccine, but they have the vaccine is proven to be 90% effective. And Cuba is the only country in the whole world that has managed to vaccinate children even from the age of two years. And uh, a, a very large uh, population of Cuba is vaccinated. But more than just the vaccination, Cuba has been seen um, to be in solidarity with a lot of African countries and also... Um, the Cuban people have offered scholarships to other people, you know, even from the underdeveloped uh, countries. What do you think or what, um, what would you say um, Cuba ascribes these successes that they've had, even with the blockades and the sanctions and the embargo from the United States? I think that uh, the, the first explanation if that uh, we are living in revolution since 1959, then because of the political will, the government since that uh, days understood that, that the most important thing is to put the human beings in the center of the life. If you go to Cuba, 
We have our health uh, sector, education, and many others free of charge for the whole population, this, despite of your ideology. Then, our former president, our dear commander in chief, Fidel Castro, understood at the very beginning that we had to develop our own industry, including the biotechnology one, including the vaccines industry. Then, for us, when the pandemic began in the March of last year, we had two ways to wait for donation, international programs, and so on, or to use our own capacity, our own professionals prepared by the Cuban revolutions to produce our own passing. Then our president met the most important uh, scientists in Cuba, asked, please, go ahead. We need to protect our people. Then today, we have three bad things applying in Cuba, and there are other two candidates. They are in different states, stage. As you said, uh, the efficacy is very, very high. And if you go to the figures, Cuba in the last uh, weeks was in the peak of the pandemic. But the number is decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. decreasing. Today, we have applied more than 20 million doses. Take into account that our population is 11 million people. All of our vaccines are three doses, all of them. Our plan is to have, at the end of October, around 90% of our population full vaccinated. And at the end of the year, 100%. Mm -hmm. Then we have different doses for children, for people who have suffered COVID, other people who are allergic to some other product. Then we have many ways just to protect our people. And you can go to the free church, our industry make a, a big effort just to guarantee the protection of, of our people. This is one of our most strong uh, ideas. And, and this is one of the explanations, the overwhelming Cuban population defends our revolution. Thank you very much. And uh, you mentioned Fidel Castro, and uh, he is the person who fought and brought the revolution. Uh, into Cuba. And in doing that, he really fought for a united country and for people to come together, and especially for the Cubans. And uh, one of the issues that we see, especially here in Africa and here in Kenya, that is divisive on, on the communist or the socialist ideology, because communism is what we are aspiring to, uh, is the issue of religion. What would be your take, maybe, of religion in Cuba and religion and communism as a whole? Look at, uh, for the Cuban revolution, in my own opinion, the most important thing is just to preserve the people united. Then we ask all of Cubans who are able to defend the revolution, if they are ready to defend the country, the independence, welcome to the Communist Party, if they want, if they want. In our opinion, the, the priority now is to keep united, because all of effort to destroy our revolution to divide our people. This is an experience that you can see 
all over the world. Yeah. Divide first and win after. Then everybody who wants to join the Cuban idea to defend their country, to defend our independence, are very welcome. Welcome to the Communist Party because it's the way to preserve our union in the country. Ah, thank you very much for that. And for another issue, you know, that um, is a worldwide controversy is the issue of, you know, the gender equity and the women equation. Uh, when you look at Cuba, it's one of the few countries in the world that has managed to have a revolution. Not just have a revolution, but it's a socialist state that is aspiring to communism. So uh, with Cuba being a socialist state, could, we, uh, could you say that you have achieved the gender equity? And what is the women equation uh, in, in your country? And worldwide, what would you say uh, should be the prospect of, of the gender equity? You cannot explain the Cuban Revolution without uh, women's uh, factor. It's not possible. In many sectors, in Cuba, many, many, many sectors, women are the majority. From the beginning of the revolution, ladies, women and men receive the same salary for the same job. Just to sex to any post or university or so on, it's not important if you are a lady or man. The only thing that is important if if you are capable or not. Yes. It's your knowledge and your, your vision. But we are coming from the capitalism. And there are a lot of uh, factors. Factors. Some of them not in favor of the women. Then we understood that we had to fight, to fight this one. And today, if you go to Cuba, you can see ladies in any important post. There are many. Ladies, as a ministers, many in the parliament. For example, in the vaccine industry, the majority of them are women. We are very proud of our lady. And if we, we have any uh, complaint today, is that we would like to see more and more and more ladies in parliament the, as ministers. That decision, uh, uh, taking decision, political decision, economic decision, post, because the history has shown that lady is the way. You cannot explain the Cuban Revolution. It is not possible. It's completely impossible without women. The women. Without women. Uh, thank you very much, uh, even for that uh, solidarity with the women worldwide and for debunking that uh, issue of gender equation. And on another issue, uh, in one of the books written by Walter Rodney, uh, known as How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, we see the issue of the propaganda against communism that is spread so much. And it is in the media and it is everywhere in everything that we consume. But especially when we talk about Cuba, then this propaganda has been, you know, propagated everywhere, especially when we look at the United States and how they even seem to propagate uh, Cuba to the outside world. And, you know, even with not allowing their citizens to be able to visit uh, the country and, uh, of course, with the embargo uh, on Cuba that is ongoing, what would you say about, you know, the anti-socialist or anti-communist or anti-Cuba propaganda that is being propagated, is it true? And, you know, if it is not true, then what is it that is being hidden from the world that maybe Cuba has achieved that, you know, there's all these sanctions around it? I think that uh, 
we can reply with the question. Yeah. Why? They have been uh, making a lot of uh, fake news. Not from now. Many, many, many years ago about socialism and communism. Why our enemies, they don't allow their citizens to travel to Cuba? Why not? If, if we are talking about a uh, war that we have to, to respect different opinions, why not? Socialism and communism ideas, why not? Why not? Why Cuba, China and some other countries are all the time pushing, contending in the international arena or trying to do it from the US and some other ally? Why? Why? Why they don't allow Cuba to live in peace? Why Cuba have survived more than 60 years? By the way, Cuba is just 90 miles from US. 90 miles. Imagine any country in the world supporting just three months of blockade, like Cuba, as Cuba has been suffering for oh, more than 62 years. Three months only, any country in the world, only. And we are there because the overwhelming majority in Cuba support the revolution. If you go through the Cuban history, you can see that it's not possible to keep in power any revolution without people's support. It's not possible. The aim means that the, our ideas works, works. And they know that and they are attacking the economy and so on, just to create desperation, just uh, to make people not happy with the reality, try to guilt, guilt the government of Cuba and not the American government. You see, you are in that condition in that difficult economic uh, condition because of your government, no? It's very unfair. And then we ask them, lift the blockade. And they allow us to show you how strong are a communist party in power. Then they don't want, mm. why? Why? If we are living in there, in this uh, beautiful world, and they are asking all the time about democracy and uh, free opinion, oh, so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. Then why they don't allow our ideas? Why not? If our people are able, our daughters, our teachers, our coaches are able to go to any place in the world to help. When we left Africa, after helping here, with very proud uh, uh, field, field, we took from Africa only our debt. Cuba is not owner of oil and any mine, gold mine, nothing like that. Cuba only has from Africa solidarity. Mm -hmm. And this is one of our, the idea of the socialism. But it's not convenient for our enemies that Cuba succeed. succeed. Thank you. Um, when we talk about communism, one of the pillars of communism over the world 
is the issue of uh, internationalism. When you talk about internationalism, we see Cuba, um, which have, has had combatants that have fought alongside, for example, African compatriots in their struggles against colonialism and imperialism. And they have assisted uh, myriads of countries, which include Algeria, Guinea-Bissau, Mozambique, Angola, Namibia, Ethiopia, in their struggle for independence, you know, against, uh, war, against you know, uh, the imperialists and in their war against our external aggression. And I think at some point, Raul Castro once said in Angola that Cuba fought alongside Africans and it left, you know, not with coffee or with minerals, but with the body bags of their heroic soldiers. And we see this uh, international solidarity that Cuba has waged, you know, even for Africa. And I think even in uh, Quito Carnavale in uh, Angola, which led, of course, to the to the uh, independence uh, of South Africa and Namibian countries. But um, in the modern world today, we see countries like Western Sahara and we see Palestine and all these other countries, for example, Western Sahara, which is Africa's last colony and it's fighting for its independence. But for most of the countries that we have, the kind of solidarity that they offer, you know, is uh, in terms of, you know, reading, uh, papers or uh, meeting in offices and not, for example, in the same way Cuba helped these African states, you know, by sending down their troops uh, to help them. Do you think that more can be done when it comes to international solidarity, especially with countries that we are seeing right now uh, who are suffering so much like Western Sahara and Palestine? And also, I mean, Cuba with the blockade uh, from the United States. L let me explain that sir. our cooperation with uh, Africa began with Algeria. We sent a medical brigade to there during the struggle against colonialism. Then in the in the uh, 80s, last century, some of the African countries struggling against colonialism, requested our support. The most uh, important example maybe is uh, Angola. Hundred thousands of uh, mi uh, military and civilians covenants were in Angola. Some of them uh, lost their life. Most of them were very young. All of them went on the voluntary race to the because we are in debt, in debt with uh, Africa. If you go through our history, you can realize that um, most of our important generals during our struggle against uh, Spain, Spain during our struggle against colonialism were African descendants. African Cuba are very close. We receive in Cuba more than one million African slaves. And the mix of the culture and religious in Cuba it's very strong. Mm -hmm. Then, for any Cubans to us to defend any African cause, it's something like mine. Something personal. They went to Africa very convinced that they were defending a very uh, fair cause. Worthy cause. Yes. A week can see today with proud that uh, our help, help uh, our cooperation help for the independence of uh, Namibia, Nelson Mandela in, in South Africa to destroy apartheid, and our troops fighting with the African troops in Quito Conavale 
could demonstrate that white army could be defeated. Could be defeated. Then we finish our mission, accomplish our mission in Angola, and we took only our dead. We are not cure, it's not, uh, there is not any property in Africa belongs to you. The only thing that uh, we need, uh, as I told you before, solidarity with Africa. And Africa, all of African countries know that they can count on Cuba in the international arena. Any African interest is also a Cuban interest. For that reason, in the last year, our enemies tried to to make some propaganda against our cooperation, civilian cooperation, mainly against our daughters. Because this is an example they, they cannot destroy. It. We have uh, medical brigades in many, many, many countries, not only in Africa, and during COVID and uh, Ebola. Ebola. We sent our daughters yes. to Africa. Yes. Today, we have medical brigades in many, many, many African countries, including Kenya. Mm -hmm. And all of our daughters here are very proud to serve, to help, in any way, the Kenyan people, the poor uh, people, the ordinary people. Then, the solidarity and the friendship between Cuba and Africa, nobody can destroy it. Because we are together in the same fight. Today, and in the future. Thank you, that is extremely profound. And I think also, um, the issue of racism in Cuba is almost non-existent because there are people of all, all races uh, interacting together. So to my um, next question is on the youth equation. Uh, we see that during the fight for the revolution in Cuba, Comandante uh, Fidel Castro, there was a commandant who was a 16-year-old, you know, a young person fighting for the revolution. Uh, in Africa today and in Kenya, to be specific, um, we have a very large number of young people, and especially in the upcoming elections where we have, you know, about six million uh, demographic of young people who are between the ages of 18 to 35, and they form uh, the bulk of the country. But one of the problems that we are facing is um, the issue of uh, youth unemployment, but also um, just uh, engaging the young people into politics. How do you think that as Africa and, and as Kenya, we can engage the youth more and work together? Look at, giving an opinion, from Cuba on what Africa should do is very uh, unfair mm -hmm. because we have to learn a lot from mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. We are very confident that the African leader, African people, will find the best way to resolve this problem. It's not only in Africa, it's, only, it's also in the whole world. In Cuba, we have special policies to protect our youth. If you take into account that uh, you can access to any university, to study any career, it only depends on your capacity. You cannot pay one cent for that. Then this is one of our secrets. We provide education, high education, to our people. In order to allow them to have their the own opinion. Mm -hmm. Today, the, the youth is very important in order to preserve 
the Cuban Revolution. Yeah. But we can on them. We can on them. I wish the African country all the best to deal with the youth issue. It's not only the Kenyan problem. Yes. It's the whole African continent, American continents, everywhere. Europe, also Asia. But we have to, to find a way to resolve this problem because the future all over the way depends on our young people. Thank you very much. And I think uh, on a lighter note, as we end, there is an Australian lady who swam uh, all the way uh, from Australia to Cuba. And, you know, just to be able to prove a point that um, uh, Cuba is, you know, should be in communication and it's accessible to other people. And I think that was a very strong way for her to, to prove a, co a point. What are your comments uh, on that as we finish? Man, Cuba is an, an open society. We are in the best disposition to talk with anybody with only one condition. Mm -hmm. We have to talk as equal, as sovereign state. Not because you are bigger, you have to impose your agenda. If you want to talk about this, we can talk. If you want to talk about that, we can talk, but as equal. I am going to hear you but you have to hear me. Because we have a lot of things to do, a lot of things to explain, but we have a lot of things to show. And we are talking to, to explain and to, to do, is because there are a lot of fake news, misinformation about cure. Then, Please don't believe in me. Go to Cuba and to see by yourself. And can I assure you that you are going to find a very happy people, very peaceful country, beautiful cities. And in Africa, you can find your second home in Cuba. Then we can talk with, I repeat, with anyone, but equal. Cuba should be respected, because despite of we are a small island, we are still alive, we are there, and we are developing in our country, and we are able to show five bad things. No other country, no other country in our region of this one. We are going to vaccinate our whole population with our own vaccines. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know another example? Another example of a country? No, I don't. Are able to vaccinate? <laughs> no. Use the own vaccines? Maybe China. Maybe? Yes, China. But, but China is also a communist state. Uh, states, yes. As the Western countries they used to say. Then, Communist Party, worse or not? <laughs> huh? I think yes. <laughs> I think yes. Uh -huh. I think yes. Mm -hmm. They are the figure there. You have the information. Why so many campaigns against our countries? Why? Invite everyone that you know to travel to Cuba to enjoy my country. Invite all of countries in the world 
just to respect you. We deserve to be respected. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, right from the horse's mouth. That is the ambassador of uh, Cuba uh, to Kenya, Mr. Ernesto Diaz Gomez. And that is an open invitation uh, for all of us and for all of our viewers who are watching to be able to visit Cuba and to see for themselves and, you know, to be able to give a testament of the country of Cuba. And thank you very much uh, for the time that you've given us and also for uh, welcoming us into your home and of course as we finish maybe you can tell us two things that you liked most and that you will miss about Kenya that one is a very difficult question <laughs> because you ask about two okay issues. fine <laughs> oh. I will miss Nairobi climb you have flowers, oh. your solidarity. Mm. I have seen here Kenyan people working very hard, mm. very hard. I enjoyed this country. I invite those people who are listening to me to come to Kenya. This is a painful country beautiful country and you can find lovely people here i miss you for everything <laughs> i miss you for your solidarity <laughs> i left a lot of friends here mm. a lot of friends then kenya will have in the next day Another man loving and missing Kenya in Cuba. Oh, there are many. There are many. <laughs> I am going to be one of them. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much. And maybe now you'd like to say hi to maybe a few people, maybe some who are in Kenya and some who are in Cuba. Uh, this is your camera. You could uh, give them your greetings or <laughs> bid them goodbye in case you will not be able to see them. <laughs> during this time, so take it away. I just, I just uh, <laughs> want to greet uh, all of Kenyans mm -hmm. and to wish you all the best. Mm -hmm. Now and in the future. <laughs> Defend your country, it's a beautiful country, and take in your mind that Cuba needs your solidarity all the time, because the Cuban ideas could be the ideas of the poor countries in the world. As Santa Nisana, I hope to see you in Cuba, some of you, hopefully all of you, and as uh, we used to finish our public intervention, Patria Muerte, venceremos. This is a slogan from the Cuban Revolution from the very beginning. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. How do you say uh, thank you very much in your language? Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Ernesto. Mucha, muchas gracias. Yeah, it's mucha been a pleasure for me. Oh, it's been a pleasure uh, to have you on the CPK TV, and it's been a pleasure for you, our viewers, to stay with us. Kindly uh, comment, and we'll be able to respond to you. Like, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much. From I, your host, Sefusani, it's been a pleasure. See you again on yet another episode next week of our CPK Bulletin.